previous lecture uh, we have been discussing about uh, the chemical characterization, the pore solution sampling and uh, how these pore solutions can be utilized for characterizing the geomaterials. Today I will be discussing uh, one more technique of uh, you know what is defined as soil washing and uh, this also is a technique to create pore solution. If I wash the sample with adequate amount of water and I can create pore solution and I can characterize the geomaterial. I will uh, continue with discussion on corrosion potential of soils today and uh, maybe sorption desorption will come later and this would be followed by thermal, electrical and magnetic characterization. There is an interesting technique of uh, characterizing soils based on their chemical characteristics, uh, particularly if you want to assess what is the level of contamination of the soils. Uh, soils may get contaminated because of uh, anthropogenic activities. The one of the interesting techniques to find out uh, contamination of soils is uh, uh, its washing. Now, it may so happen that soils may get uh, contaminated because of several natural phenomena or anthropogenic uh, uh, processes. I think anthropogenic processes all of you understand this could be the influence of the industrial activities which uh, are going on vigorously everywhere in the world and the natural processes could be I am sure you must have heard about the oozing out of ars arsenic in certain part of the country particularly in the eastern part of the country where the arsenic comes out of the ground and contaminates the water and this is a uh, environmental effect on the soils and soils leach out arsenic. So, what I am trying to say is that the soil contamination could occur both naturally as well as anthropogenically and uh, if you want to establish what is the level of contamination of uh, soils. Uh, these techniques which I am going to talk about today would be very, very useful. We have been working on the concept of uh, soil pollution index. Uh, this is the quantification of how much the polluted the soil is and uh, why I am trying to quantify the soil pollution or soil contamination is because of the simple fact that as a geotechnical engineer, environmental geotechnologist, I would like to decontaminate the soils later. And when you decontaminate the soils, uh, this process is quite uh, time consuming as well as cost intensive. So, in today's world everything is cost oriented, time oriented and uh, you cannot use qualitative terms just to define the soil is contaminated. The question which industries ask you is what is the level of contamination and how much time and efforts it would take to decontaminate the soils. So, with this pretext, I will start my discussion on uh, how would you assess the level of contamination of geomaterials or the soils. Uh, there are two techniques which are normally used and these techniques are uh, direct techniques or the direct methods and indirect methods and there is a big series of direct methods which are available. Uh, in the literature, people have been working in this area. The first one is pore solution extraction, which I was discussing in the previous lecture. Uh, you can take out a sample of geomaterial, it could be concrete, it could be soils, it could be rocks and you can place it in a pressure membrane extractor, which I showed you last time. You can apply certain amount of pressure uh, through the compressed air and in the process, the pore solution comes out and this pore solution can be analyzed by using atomic absorption spectrophotometer, which I showed you when we were discussing about the chemical characterization or this can be analyzed by using ICP-MS, inductively coupled plasma mass spectroscopy. So, depends upon what is the level of accuracy you want. AAS is less accurate. Uh, it is normally used up to ppm levels, parts per million of the concentration or the contaminants. ICPMS is used for uh, you know ppb or ppt levels, parts per billion or parts per trillion levels and then uh, people are using gas chromatography also particularly to identify the level of contamination which is form of uh, organic volatile substance. 
a gas chromatograph has become necessary uh, equipment in modern day geotechnical engineering laboratories because uh, you would like to ascertain uh, the level of contamination of the soil before you start doing the conventional tests including uh, the specific gravity, liquid limit or particle distribution or whatever. Uh, then we have uh, different types of ion selective electrodes in the market uh, which are very useful to find out uh, what is the level of contamination of the geomaterials. There are different types of probes and sensors which are nowadays being used uh, and developed and this is where uh, geotechnical engineers like me would like to collaborate with people from nano sciences, nano electronics, metallurgy uh, department, physics professionals, chemical engineers, biotechnologists, microbiologists and so on. Because these are the guys who give inputs to uh, a designer who could design a sensor for a specific purpose. So, gas sensing is state of the art right now. Uh, liquid sensing is state of the art right now. Solid form of contaminants in the soil is a also a very very state of the art thing uh, in the present scenario. So, all the phases of the matter can be detected by using the sensors. Uh, there is another series of uh, uh, tests which falls under the category of indirect methods and this is where we have done lot of work in our field by utilizing the impedance spectroscopy uh, by uh, employing an impedance analyzer. So, those of you who have some interest in electrical engineering, electronics engineering, you might have come across this equipment which is uh, impedance analyzer or in impedance spectrometer. So, what we do is we check the response of the material in a very wide range of frequency of current AC. All right. So, we will talk about the uh, discussion between what type of current should be utilized DC or AC, what are the advantages and disadvantages and uh, uh, this is a sort of a third eye for me. I hope you understand what is the meaning of third eye. Third eye is something which is not visible, but you can look into a matter and you can uh, realize what is happening. So, in any closed control volume, if I want to see what is happening inside without opening up the system to the atmosphere, I would like to see what is happening inside the material, what is cooking up inside. We are using these concepts for even uh, detection of the hydrates which get formed in the sediments which Bini is working on and uh, in fact Ganraj who is trying to work on the uh, neutralization of uh, heavily polluted soils by different techniques, even Jasmine is working this area by air purging, by acid purging or by different types of reactive gases when they are purged into the system. So, impedance spectroscopy as I said is becoming a non-destructive technique to establish the mechanisms which occur in the porous media all right and I will give you some exposure of uh, how this is being used. Incidentally, material scientists have used impedance spectroscopy to uh, define the phase change in the material particularly for the alloys and uh, this concept can be extended in environmental geomechanics. If I want to see what is the uh, state of the material like soils when they are exposed to super uh, critical temperatures particularly in the frozen zones and uh, at very elevated temperatures. There is a wide range of activities which you can uh, do. Uh, the second one is uh, the electrical resistivity method where you can find out the electrical resistivity of the of the geomaterials to uh, relate to the porosity of the medium and uh, I am sure you will realize that uh, porosity is the term which is very very important to uh, geotechnical engineers because all the mechanical properties and engineering properties of the geomaterial would depend upon the porosity uh, be it uh, shear strength, be it compressibility, be it consolidation, be it you know volumetric deformation, swelling, shrinking whatever. So, everything can be related as a function of the porosity and electrical resistivity gives you a good methodology to measure the porosity and the alterations in the porosities which are happening inside the system because of uh, physical, chemical, electrical, mechanical, biological mechanisms. 
there are some electromagnetic methods which are being used in the contemporary uh, society or the world. Uh, these are known as TDR and FDR probes, very state of the art things uh, which we have used for uh, finding out the in situ moisture content in the soils and the MSW in the landfills. These type of studies have been done by uh, my ex students Agnes Anto and Dr. Patel and now we are extending these studies uh, through Arif and uh, others. So, as the name uh, reflects TDR and FDR are time and frequency domain reflectometry and uh, these are the techniques which are used for determining the in situ density and the in situ moisture content volumetric not the gravimetric. So, gone are the days when people used to bring the samples to the laboratory to determine their moisture content uh, as simple as uh, you know you can understand that why this has been written off this technique because chances are that you are disturbing the sample. Number 2 it is very difficult to preserve the moistures uh, in the sample for a pretty long time transportation is another problem. So, everybody wants to measure in situ. Then uh, the application of dielectric constant uh, is being done uh, for finding out the uh, fundamental behavior of the geomaterial and level of contamination also and this is where ground penetrating radars have been used by people. So, this is the state of the art on the subject. What I suggest is to follow this discussion uh, you should go through the papers which are written by my students and uh, most of this matrix has already been uh, covered in our laboratory. So, there is nothing new it has become a routine exercise all right. So, this is just to tell you that already it uh, these techniques have been mastered and they have been shown to be working all right in the field as well as in the laboratory. However, there is a caution that uh, both these techniques or the methodologies have their limitations. Uh, first of all, these are the expensive instrumentation and uh, very cumbersome methodologies though they appear to be very simple. Even in the direct methods, uh, the preparation of the sample is quite cumbersome, very expensive and indirect methods, uh, the gadgets which are used themselves are very expensive. So, intensive and rigorous sample preparation has to be done uh, which is time consuming and uh, there is a complicated process which is involved uh, related to the calibration and analysis of the results and for both the techniques you require skilled and trained uh, manpower or the personals. So, these are the limitations, uh, but this is the future of uh, the subject uh, because most of the consulting houses and the business houses they are looking for uh, experts who can give them quick answers or who can give them the solutions as far as the monitoring of a process is concerned. Can we use all these methods for any kind of soil or any particular division is there for? I knew somebody is going to ask this question and that turned out to be you. So, very difficult question to answer and particularly if you read the papers which are written by Sushal Lakshmi, uh, these techniques are not universal. So, now you are going into the intricacies of these techniques and I think these techniques have to be evolved in such a manner that people should know their limitations and you know their shortcomings, but there is no harm in trying all the techniques together and then putting on a scale and seeing them uh, how do they compare with each other. So, a quick answer to your question is if you have organic soils, chances are that your indirect methods will not work. Why? Because impedance measurement is mostly dielectric based and dielectric constant of organic matter, matter is difficult to define. Another issue is that the organic matter will keep decaying. So, all these parameters will depend upon the exposure conditions and the time when you are measuring these properties which itself is a question mark. We will come to this, but you have to read a lot. There is a journal known as sensors and if you follow the IEEE journals on sensors, uh, this is where the modern day geotechnical engineers are 
behind their publication because of a simple reason that electronics and geotechnical engineering you know they are quite hand in gloves and uh, unless we work together we cannot solve these issues. Remember the soils which are contaminated are not the right place for humans to access. Are you getting this point? So, suppose if I tell you an example where the pH of the soil is 12 or 13, the first question is how would you access the site, how would you take out the samples. There could be a situation where the soils are emitting uh, fumes. So, you have to take a lot of precautions. I hope you can imagine when you are accessing these type of sites, a uh, lot of precautions have to be taken so that you face less health hazards and the sampling becomes another issue. Are you getting a point? So, it is a very big theme of discussion. Anything else? But I am sure you will realize that this is where the challenge is and this is what people like you should be taking up 